So, problem D, Gem Island. Looks tough. Yeah, but we will discuss how to solve it. Um, so, what is it about? Uh, it's about some people g getting uh, one gem initially, and then there is some magical process of splitting the gems. Uh, each day, one gem is split into two, randomly across all the gems that are in this world. Interesting. So, if I have more gems than uh, someone else, I have higher probability of getting uh, getting more gems next night. Yeah, so like in real world, the rich people are more uh, probable to get even more rich. Interesting. So let's look at this example. So for instance, the sample two, you have three people. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. And they have one gem each. And they are there for three days. So Let's say that on the first day, this gem splits. On the second day, let it be this one. And on the third day, let's say this gem splits again. So we end up with this. And so what do we output to the output file? Oh, yeah, we are asked to output the expected number of gems among the R richest people. So it's not this specific uh, combina uh, situation, but also all possible uh, situation of splitting of the gems. Exactly. And we have to count the average o over all of them, mm -hmm. the total number of gems in the, among the R richest people in each situation. Yes. And in this case, it will be five. Because yes, because two plus we have three, two plus and three. Uh, mm -hmm. we are asked about the two richest people. Mm -hmm. So I have an in interesting observation. So, let's say you have a situation like this. The first person has two gems, the second person has three gems, and the last person has only one gem. So we draw in gems and boundaries between gems, for, meaning that these gems are for the first person and this is for the second. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what I claim is that this situation has the same probability of occurring as, say, the situation where one person gets all the money. So you mean the tuple 231 is uh, as probable as the tuple 141? Yes, all, all tuples have the same probability of happening. Well, that's not obvious, at least. So uh, the way you prove it is you go backwards. Mm -hmm. You say, how can this uh, situation occur? Yes, there is not a, to a lot of uh, ways that this combination could arrive from the pre previous one. Yes, so for instance, it may have happened that this was the last gem that was uh, created, mm -hmm. or this was the last gem that was split, mm -hmm. or it was this one. So there are three probable edges in this uh, graph, three probable ways to receive this new situation. Okay, I got it. Yes, and if we look from the opposite side, for instance, if this was the split one, mm -hmm. then here we have five gems, and each one has the same probability of being split. Yes, that's what we are told in the statement. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the edge to a situation with six gems, there are five such edges, and all have the same probability. Yes, yeah, so we go from this situation to this situation with probability exactly one-fifth. Yes, there is a clear mm -hmm. bijection between those. Mm -hmm. And since in the base case where everyone has one gem, there's only one situation, hence it's equiprobable, mm -hmm. We can use induction to prove that this holds true. But how many edges are in this situation, co coming into this situation? Is it the same or not? One, two, three. It's the same. Oh, I see, because the number of gems and boundaries is the same, and each boundary forbids us exactly, uh, for example, this and this uh, splitting, and this and this, this splitting. So we have the same number of splittings here and here, and each boundary forbids two of them. So we have exactly three possible splittings right here, leading to this situation, and exactly three right here. So the number of edges coming in is the same. And in previous situation, the probability of each edge being selected is also the same, because we have five uh, gems right here and five ge gems right here. And the probability is one-fifth. Mm -hmm. Good. So how do we solve it now? We're definitely looking for some kind of dynamic programming approach. Yeah, because now we have all, all the possible tuples equiprobable, and we just want to find the expectation of the R largest number in, uh, among all possible tuples.
So I suggest uh, that we sort the, saw the people by number of gems they have at the end. Yes, because we can uh, think about this tuple as being 3 to 1. Yes, yeah, so it would be easier to calculate. Yeah, it's not usual end, doing dynamic programming. We, mm -hmm. can, we can just multiply it with some binomial coefficient to mm -hmm. account for the ordering. So what's our situation in the dy dy dynamic programming? Um, so we can assign the gems to people uh, in descending order. So we first mm -hmm. say we put, we, we give someone 500, which is the maximum, 500 gems. We may give, give it to zero or one person. Mm -hmm. And then we assign 499 and so on. So our state would be um, the number of the number of gems that we assign to the last person. Mm -hmm. uh, then it would be the number of people that we've already assigned our gems to, and the number of gems that we've already assigned. Mm -hmm. So we are currently assigning exactly i gems to the next person, and we have already processed uh, j gems and k people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the transition from here is rather obvious. Because we are, this process is, we are assigning i, uh, exactly i gems to the next set of people. It probably is, one, is probably one person or several per people or even zero people. I guess the zero people case is the easiest. Because if we assign i, exactly i gems, gems to zero people, then uh, we just switch to i minus one. Yes, the number of ways how to achieve this doesn't change, and neither does uh, the expectation. Mm -hmm. But then we can uh, assign exactly i gems to several people. Yes, and we need to permute those people. Right? In this, mm -hmm. in, in, in this ordering, we are free to permute them, and it shouldn't affect the result. So we need to make sure that we compute them binomial, it's going to be multinomial coefficient. We need to make sure that we compute <coughs> as we go. So we're not mm -hmm. only going to store the expectation that we have so far, but we also need to store uh, the number of ways how can we achieve the current partial configuration. Mm -hmm. So it will be a second array in the dynamics. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we uh, iterate over how many people uh, get assigned exactly i gems. And we get the formula how to go from this state to the next state with i minus 1, right? Mm -hmm. uh, j, the number of gems increases by, well, let, maybe we should int introduce the variable how many people receive i gems, right? No, we, no. Can just, mm -hmm. we can just put it into the binomial coefficient right away, and then we no longer need to store it. Mm -hmm. So we know the new number of gems that we have already assigned and the new number of people that we have already processed. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you know what bugs me? Mm -hmm. We may have n transitions from this state because we may assign uh, i gem, uh, we may assign mm. i, I gems, gems to a very to very large number of people, linear number of people. But I think it's not always possible because if we have already, already assigned quite a lot of gems, then we don't have uh, much uh, space for uh, assigning i gems to people. That is true. But the worst case is that we can still assign a lot of them. Well, so formally, we, we have solution working with n cube uh, uh, cells in the array, and each cell gives us n edges forward. So it's the is, it, is it always n? Perhaps if you assign n half gems to someone, you can only assign it to two people at most. Yes. So uh, not at all. Not all of the transitions are possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. The number of edges from this is, we can express it as mm -hmm. something like n minus j, which is the number of gems that we left with, mm -hmm. over i. And this mm -hmm. we sum over all i, j, k. And this is the number of edges on the whole graph. Yeah, because when i is large, then this number will be small. So we have to sum it and it will be not uh, quadratic. I think if you, if you group it over i, you'll get exactly the harmonic sequence, so it will sum up to logarithm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at n cubed log n. It should be fast enough. It's 3 seconds and n is up to 500. 
Yeah, that should should fit. Also, no, probably not all the states in the dynamic programming are accessible. What do you mean? Well, probably we can uh, we can't assign if we are assigning i uh, i gems to the current uh, current people, then it is not possible that we have assigned, for example, i i over two uh, gems already. Right. So so if we assign gems to to K people, and mm -hmm. each of them has at least a i plus one. one. Then definitely we have already given out uh, k times i plus one. Yeah, so j has mm -hmm. to be larger than k times i plus one. Yeah. This will further cut the state space. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling good about this solution. Yeah, we should get accepted, not time limit. <laughs>